so many memories. So many memories. Like the first day of shooting was completely out of sequence. That was Sybil and I making out at the lake. That was like the first day. That must have been a hard day. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. Did it? It was tough. Yeah, that was tough. Really? Oh, yeah. Why? Well, it was very uncomfortable. I, I remember Peter said, you know, we got to get your hands out of here today. And it was uncomfortable. There was a whole crew sitting on the hood of the car. <laughs> and I was doing this. He said, faster, faster. faster. <laughs> <laughs> he slapped my hand. He said, oh, get a blister. <laughs> I remember that. She was what, 19 too? How old was she? No, no, I mean, she and Jeff about the same age. They're like 20. I was younger. I was younger. Uh, you guys hear him? Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Let's get your Sam, questions. Sam Bottom, is that your brother? Yeah, my little brother passed three years ago from brain cancer, but uh, he, he, my mom and dad were going through a heavy divorce at that time, and, and uh, I got this picture, and she said, Tim, can you take Sam, and we're just having a hell of a time. I said, sure, so I flew him out to Texas with me, and uh, Peter saw him and said, hey, do you think Sam would be good for this part of the movie? Dennis Quaid was cast in the part. Oh, yeah. He and Randy came up from Houston. Dennis was cast in the part, and he said, "No, Sam better, but he's got braces." So Columbia Pictures said, "We'll replace the replace the braces uh, if you'll do the movie." So Sam did the movie. I did, well, I had done one motion picture before that for Dalton Trumbo. It was called Johnny Got His Gun. Yeah. Right. Dalton Trumbo was a great movie. Well, yeah, he wrote Spartacus, Long awesome. Ray. And he was, you know, Dalton Trumbo was very famous. He was one of the highest paid, he was the highest paid screenwriter in Hollywood at the time. He was thrown in jail by the McCarthy, you know, essentially for writing the book, Johnny Got His Gun. And I was doing that motion back to back with Picture Show. So I had worked all summer on, on Johnny Got His Gun and then there was so much dialogue in Johnny Got His Gun that I would work Mondays through Saturdays in uh, Archer City. They'd run me down to Dallas, or uh, to Wichita Falls, we'd fly down to Dallas, and I'd get to midnight to LA, and I'd do dialogue all day Sunday, and then get me on the uh, red eye back to Dallas, and I'd show up at work Monday morning at 8 o'clock. So, but I was young, I was 19, so I, I did that. I worked seven days a week for seven months. Well, I never really lived in Hollywood. I, this guy don't live in Hollywood, well, man. He lives well, on a ranch way out. He's in Santa Barbara. Uh, Bar well, I grew up in Santa Barbara, but you know, yeah. the best, I got in the movies because I wanted to be a cowboy. I grew up being a cowboy. That's what I did in high school. And so the, the best relationship, uh, friendship I had was with Ben Johnson, who was, you know, he was the real thing, man. He was a real cowboy. I got to rope with Ben the last four years of his life for his charity Cowboys for Kids. There are a few of us. Yeah. in Hollywood that I actually wrote, and, and he called me up, and that was a real honor. So I got to carry the colors in a lot of arenas, and um, I got to rope with him. So that was that was a big deal for me. But I've always run away from I've, I just, I, I, I was my own worst enemy for many years, and I just kept, I'd run away up to my ranch and, and, uh, and hide out there. But um, I'm here with the director, Tammy Hoff, Tamar Hoff, and we're gonna try to resurrect a, a career. Career. Right. questions about uh, what was your favorite part of doing that film, and what was the part you hated most about mm -hmm. doing that film? Well, I remember. Uh, see, it was a very emotional time for me. My mom and dad were going through a divorce, and during that time, Peter left his wife, Polly Platt. I held Peter up against the wall by his shirt, picked him up off the thing. I told him what a fool he was doing that, uh, he started having an affair with Sybil, oh, and his wife had just had a baby, and this, this was really bothering me, I mean, we had a real, inside Hollywood, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Ellen Burstyn showed up in a camper, she was living in her camper with her kids, a lot of careers, all those careers started, I mean, Ben Johnson did not want to do this picture, because it, you saw it was all tits, and, and that was really racy stuff back then, and mm -hmm. lousy language, and Ben was a real straight shooter. He, he, he did it as a favor to, uh, 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 what's his name, the one of my director, uh, John Ford. To John Ford. Yeah, he did it as a favor for John Ford. Uh, Peter was writing a book about him at the time, or whatever, and so 
In fact, that tank where he, he actually grew up near there, and, which is kind of interesting. And it was that scene that really got him that Academy Award. For that. Did he deserve that Academy Award or what? Yeah. 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 I think a few other people might have deserved an Academy Award. Yes, ma'am, you've been very polite yeah. and waiting. Yes. I saw this show in uh, Woodward, Oklahoma, when it was first came out. 1971. I, it didn't re I don't remember it being that racy. Well, no, they, oh, they, they, they wasn't then. They had that was the director's cut. Oh. They, yeah, I thought, this is another I cut. I wasn't a show in Woodward, Oklahoma, but I tell you, I have every grain of sand, every person in there, I could put a name. Wait, and you know what, what? Why this film has been so successful? Because in every little town in Yugoslavia or Spain or Italy or Africa or South America, it's the same story. It is. It's the same story, and that's why it was so successful. But the person who needs a lot of applause is Robert Surtees. He he was the cinematographer of this, and he gave it that look. You know, a movie is all yeah. about the visual, it was, it was and, and he really is the unsung hero for that picture. I, if anybody deserved an Academy Award, it really did look like that. Well, he wanted to make it look like HUD, which was McMurtry had written before. That was Paul Newman's picture. Mm -hmm. You know, when I started, it was all for free because I loved it. And when you start getting into the big machinery of the big motion picture, the blockbuster, it's all about the dollar. And unless you're willing to prostitute yourself and do certain things and say certain lines that maybe you're totally against, you're out. Agreed. You're what you are. It's just the way it is, you know. Not this. Yes, sir. That's what the motion picture is all about. It's you don't have to understand what's being said because it's a visual art. Yeah. It's nice to. To under, you have to play. But movies aren't really what it's about. It's the music gives you the emotion. It's, we talked about this earlier. You know, great, you know, like the silent movies. You, yeah, or some foreign films. You have to understand the language if it's well done. You see everything by the lingering, by, the mo by living and just letting the camera run. And then the editor, Peter in this case, finds out those pieces that, that work.